and welcome back to my channel, the very best place to be to discover exactly how your thoughts and your emotions are affecting your whole health. Hi, I'm Andrew Coulter, and so we've been talking about how our emotional traumas and conflicts that we go through that we don't properly resolve affect our health in a chronic way. And some of the you know interesting symptoms and physical signs that the body is trying to get your attention as to what emotional problem you're struggling with and then ways that you can help work through and resolve that issue in a better way, in a more fully expressive way so that you can be freer and live life in a much more vivacious way. Last week I talked about anger and all the ways that uh, you express, you know, maybe unconsciously the anger that you're struggling with. And the next sort of level up, if you will, or down, whichever way you want to look at emotional baggage, <laughs> is resentments. Resentments are a colder, sort of more sclerotic emotional state. I know we often think of anger as fiery uh, and expressive and violent, but remember, repressing our emotions actually makes them colder. And so when we have resentment, it is a colder emotional state than anger and it is a more contractive state which can actually make it more um, destructive on your life force you know we often let resentments and things like guilt and resentments and jealousies and these states we let we tend to let them fester we don't really know how to work through them properly resentment often stems from you know feelings of powerlessness uh, real true victimization. Now I know, you know, anger is an immediate feeling from being victimized, but when you victimize chronically uh, and you, you know, you're not expressing your anger, you're not expressing it saying, hey, no, no, like we talked about in the last video, if you're not doing those exercises, then you're probably carrying around a lot more resentment than you realize. And resentment can fester and it can create all kinds of physical issues. The more we allow our emotions to become chronic and fester, the more they contract the life force. And the more your life force at an energetic level is contracted, the more your physical body will be contracted. So resentments can create issues and deep, deep held anger create issues like tumors and cysts and deep scars and contractions of the life force and the physical body. Things, you know, even like scleroderma, uh, where the body is hardening itself down. These are deep unresolved resentment issues. And again, some of these symptoms, you know, that you wouldn't think of, but they are your body's way. Like where the heck does scleroderma come from? Why the heck is the body creating these tumors? It's because it's trying to contain the emotional tension, the emotional stress and the strain and the contraction and the coldness and the breaking down because you're not expressing it. You're not working through it in the right mental emotional way, the physical body is going to have to do something with it because you are a inclusive being. You have a mental, emotional and physical being all in one that are all trying to work together to have your best soul spiritual life, to live your life in the best way. But when you deny and you suppress and you repress, and you don't properly resolve these emotional mental conflicts, the physical body is going to express it. And if it, you ignore it even more, then that expression gets harder and deeper and starts affecting the more noble organs and it starts affecting the physical body in a bigger, badder way. It's almost like if you ignore the sign, the sign's gonna get bigger and harder. And so, that's what these videos are about, is to try and get you to be aware of even the little signs to, that, huh, maybe those chronic little weird issues that I've been having, like eczema or like acne, chronic acne, or all these skin issues are some anger or resentments or things that I'm not allowing myself to work through. Maybe it's time to work through the mental emotional problem and then let the physical body heal itself with the right support. So without further ado, let's go through that list, those secret ways that your body is expressing its resentments. You know, aside from, hey, you got some cysts and tumors and, you know, sclerotic issues going on that many of us don't even, we're not even aware of. Because again, remember, it's super cold, you know, contractive states and internal that you might not even be aware that they're there until it's far too late. But 
there might be some external signs that you can maybe be more attentive to like these next bunch of things. So get a pen and paper, remember, write them down and see which ones you connect with the most and which ones you have. Because if you do, then there's some resentment issues that we need to work through. The number one main way that I often see people carrying resentments is being a victim in life, not taking a stand for themselves, you know, letting people railroad them into doing anything and everything for them with when they don't really want to. So that true doormat feeling, but in a sense that they really overextend themselves. So going over and beyond their even physical capacity to try to please everyone else. Also a constant desire for activity, uh, a constant desire to travel, to move, to be somewhere else. You know, people who wheel their leg all the time, they're agitated, they're, can't, you know, gosh, can't sit still, you know. Weirdly, resentment issues. Being super fastidious, uh, meaning, you know, perfectionist, you know, liking things super neat and clean and control. Control is a big issue, and if you follow these along, you'll know that I had some control issues. <laughs> and I, I mean, I still do on some level, uh, but I'm very aware of it, and I use it in a healthy, constructive way. I don't let myself get to that point where I'm obsessively, compulsively fastidious and, and can't, and get so worked up if things aren't in exactly the right way. You know, if you're like that, you probably have some resentment issues you need to work through. Having trouble staying focused all the time. Again, that whole agitated, like I talked about feeling, just, you know, being, hmm, need to move, you know, can't focus, can't be attentive. That's a big part of this as well. Being worried and anxious, even about unknown things, things that you have no control over. Remember, it goes back to that control fastidious thing. If you are always anxious and worried about upcoming things or what if, or, you know, if that's stressing you all the time, probably have some resentment issues. Problems regulating your heat. Um, so either being too hot all the time or being too cold all the time. It's just not having a proper regulatory system. Again, it's how your emotions are affecting, you know, your whole endocrine system as well. Throws off what we call the thermotic principle. So remember in anger, if you watch that video, I talked about sleepy all day. Well, this one has just energy slumps later in the afternoon. So if you find that you're feeling kind of tired and draggy sort of through the supper hour, then that could be resentments. Again, can be other reasons too, obviously. Not enough water, not enough proper essential fatty acids. But if every day for long periods of time, no matter how much water you drink, you just want to have a nap in the afternoon, then you might have some resentment issues. Also, if you feel better from a short nap, I am not a napper, and even if I try to have a nap, I generally wake up feeling crappier. But if you actually like naps and you feel better, might be some resentment issues. Prone to acute illnesses, so constantly battling a cold, or feeling like you're just always getting sick. Think about the body contractive and being shut down. You know, when you're shut down, the whole system is stressed and not functioning at its optimum. So of course your immune system is going to be stressed to the max all the time too. And then that will affect your health overall. But emotional contractive states like anger, because it's the same uh, as resentment, is just being more prone to getting sick. Also, if you've developed, you know, a chronic issue like mono or pneumonia or pertussis, uh, deep chronic illnesses that you never get over, that you just, you know, that whole never been well since issue, that's usually deep, deep resentments that your body just is not able to let go of and needs some help working through, which again is creating this whole um, sort of autoimmune issues is really kind of starts starts getting triggered with resentments. Uh, many moles and um, dark spots on the skin, you know, if you're prone to always getting more moles and more neve and resentments. Deep internal headaches, uh, if you have that capping kind of, you know, weighted down, pressure, constantly headache, could be resentment that you're just not working through. That Again, it's that needing the pressure to get your attention that you need to work through this. I used to always get headaches. Again, grief can create a lot of headaches as well, but resentment does too. Regardless of 
which emotional state it is, you know, there are certain ways that you can help to work through. And I find, I always find remedies are one of the better ways, but also e emotionally expressing. So finding those exercises, like we've talked about in the other two videos, the first two, definitely go in and check them out because they really always make my headaches go away along with remedies. Another really big interesting symptom that comes up, and this is always, I see it with guilt and resentment, is a lump in the throat. So feeling like you always <clears throat> have to <clears throat> clear your throat, like there's a lump, you know, you try to swallow and it feels like there's always something stuck there, that is oftentimes resentments. Same with a tickle, you know, like the lump, it's that tickle in your throat. And then cravings. So we talked about, you know, grief is salt. Uh, resentment has salt too, which is interesting. And, you know, I wonder if there's a big correlation between deep grief some anger issues then creating resentment. If resentment's like another step down the line. But definitely salt. Uh, fats though, craving fats, like liking lots of greasy fatty things and chocolate. These are often indicators, again, if you're chronically obsessed with those sorts of things, body's way of trying to tell you that I need to resolve this issue. Chronic constipation is a big one, again, can be linked to grief, uh, and in, but we talked about control issues with resentment. So res control is a big, big issue for people who are res have heavy duty resentment issues. And so constipation is a big one for resentment. So if you have chronic constipation, then resentment is the emotional state you need to work through the most. And then the last one is really waking at four in the morning. It's an odd time, I know, but it's the, um, gallbladder-ish time and liver gallbladder are anger, resentment organs. Uh, and so that waking up early in the morning and then can't get back to sleep. Like no matter what you do, you just can't get back to sleep. Get resentment, liver, gallbladder. What I'm going to do is remember, I'm going to have a link below for my anger frustration kit. It works for resentment as well. And there's lots of great tips and ideas and suggestions aside from the remedies in there on how to work through those sleep issues, how to work through those exercises that we worked in the last one. So if you haven't watched the anger video, definitely go back and watch it because the, the breath work and the breathing exercises and the releasing the anger is gonna help you to also release the resentment. So make sure you know you, you go through the list. If you've got some of these issues that you are struggling with, you know, watch the grief one and the anger one, and then check out my kits that you can work through these issues as well. Those are honestly the remedies are the fastest and the easiest way to start shifting them, but you do have to consciously be aware of them. So start to reflect. If you've really connected with a lot of those, you know, points that I've gone through. And you're thinking, hmm, well, what the hell am I resentful about? Start doing the exercises that I've done in the anger exercise at the end. And then while you're doing them, whatever emotional things come up, get, you'll get flashes of, oh, yeah. Start writing them down. Keep a journal. I really, really think, you know, all of us should be, as we're working through old emotional stuff, keeping a journal is a really good way to, to be able to stop during the day when something triggers you emotionally, to be able to write it down and say, uh, because you don't want to stop maybe in the middle of your work day or in the middle of this meeting and go, oh, excuse me, I have to process this issue. No, you, but maybe on your phone, make a note where you can just note that this person said this and it triggered you and you feel, uh, why? Because remember, it's always yours. However you well up, no matter what external is coming at you, the reaction you have is yours. And why? Why are you having that reaction? What is that reaction trying to help you to work through and to be aware of? Gaining more awareness of yourself and understanding and learning to really truly listen to what your body's trying to express to you so that you can free it of any of the unwanted emotional mental baggage so that you can live each day much freer, much less reactive and in a more enlightened way is really what this journey should be about. So hopefully these videos have been giving you some great tips and ideas and suggestions. You know, please let me know. Leave a comment. I'd like to know. Are you watching these? Are you going through the list? Do you have some of these states? If you do, I want to know. I'd love to work through them with you and help you out with any other ideas, maybe some unique ideas that you need. Uh, I'm happy to share. So thank you for watching. I hope you have an amazing health-filled week and work on some of these exercises. And remember, catch me next week where we go into guilt. Are you carrying some guilt? 
Check in next week and find out. Remember, be authentic, be empowered, and own it completely. Bye.